My name is Tom Azaka, and I'm a resident of Strong, Maine. I proudly served in the Air Force and the Air Force Reserve for 30 years. I held command positions at both the squadron and wing level and have more than 4,000 flight hours as a C-130 navigator. Never in all that time did I encounter a proposal as poorly conceived and executed as the current Condor MOA environmental impact statement. For nearly three years, the people of Western Maine have attended meetings with the Massachusetts Air National Guard and ERM Corporation that have been filled with false statements, faulty logic, and procedural errors. We have asked questions and not received answers. To two fundamental documents involved, the environmental assessment and the environmental impact statement do not even approach the standard required for professional research. They are both replete with errors and omissions. Because of limited time, I will only give you a few examples to illustrate the poor quality and disingenuous nature of the documents. In the EAA, it was clearly stated that the F-15 does not have an instrument to show the height above the ground. In a hearing on this campus, that caused some controversy. So guess what? It got removed from the EIS unless the, a new instrument is installed. So this plane does not have an instrument to tell the pilot how high he is above the ground. So sometimes he's 400, sometimes he's 600. He's trying to be 500. This may be a small point, but it points to a pattern of information manipulation. At early meetings, Brigadier General Rice promised no fly bubbles for people or areas that objected to the jet noise. There is no longer a mention of the no fly bubbles in the EIS or any other meaningful mitigation for the significant environmental impact these flights would cause. NEIS, according to NEPA guidelines, must have fully developed alternatives. While they claim there are none, they know different. Just last month, August, they flew eight airplanes and 150 people to Las Vegas to train. As somebody mentioned, this is a question simply of cost. There are many other places to do this training, but not on one tank of gas. So what happens is the requirements get defined so they point to Condor. You can come to Condor from Westfield, go back, do this training on one tank of gas. So it is simply a cost shift from the Air Force to the people of Maine. When an airplane gets assigned to a base, they do a basing study. The Air Force is responsible to train and equip the military. It is the Air Force's job to provide an opportunity for these people to get the training that the Air Force says they need. There are alternatives. In a recent letter to Governor Baldacci, <coughs> Lieutenant General Wyatt, Director of the Air National Guard, claimed the proposal in the EIS would result in less noise and a safer flying environment. At the very time he was making this claim, the Air National Guard is prepared to make payments to homeowners adjacent to their base in Westfield. Now these people have lived with 810 jets for years with no problems. But now, due to the increased noise, of the F-15, the Guard is required to either buy homes or pay for sound insulation. These F-15s don't get any quieter when they get to Maine. So while they are paying off their neighbors in Massachusetts, they are telling us the jets will be quieter because the noise is being spread out over a larger area. That's right. That's right. Now there's going to be jet noise where none existed before, but it is going to be quieter for everybody concerned. The math and the logic don't make sense. In addition, there is no noise data for F-18s that already have triggered calls to 9-11 or for the F-35, which would likely replace the aging F-15. F-15 was grounded past year for structural problems. It's like an old pickup truck. It gets so far, you don't put any more money into it. So don't tell me it's a hypothetical to say the F-35 might fly here. Oh, by the way, the F-35 is nine decibels louder, in logarithmic terms, twice as loud. It's not listed in here. All of the airplanes, the P-3, gone. KC-135, not likely. Show me the F-18, show me the F-22, show me the F-35, show me their noise data. The safety claim is even less credible. For years, there have been one-way military training routes with specific boundaries in Western Maine. In the late 80s, I flew them myself. Local pilots know where they are, and the routes are indicated on aviation charts. 
The EIS proposal would allow random flight by F-15s to an intercept training at altitudes from 500 feet above the ground to in excess of 10,000 feet. So civilian pilots would not know where they are, where they would encounter F-15s going 500 miles an hour, 400 miles an hour faster than them in most cases. Any claim of radio advisories or onboard radar to provide aircraft separation is wistful thinking. The safety claim by General Wyatt is made because less time would, in theory, be spent by F-15s at low altitude. Okay. That's like saying it's safer to drive 90 miles an hour on the highway than 60 because you spend less time there. <laughs> you can't make this stuff up. They got a three-star general to sign off on this. He signed off on talking points. This has been a long struggle. It's lasted three years. I maintain that a risk analysis of the high to low intercept maneuvers in this flying environment would be significantly less safe. This is the important time. At this time, and for the public record, I am calling for FAA field hearings to review this EIS to be held in Augusta. These hearings would allow subject matter experts and local residents to cross-examine the content of the proposal section by section under oath for all to see, giving legitimacy to the process. You've heard the term, term rubber stamp. This is how you throw out the rubber stamp. They need to come here. They need to face us face to face under oath in cross-examination. These guys will deny the fact they're not the ones that make the decision. They just are in a cooperating agency by member of agreement with the FAA. Hand in glove the whole way. The train has left the station. The only way to stop it is to get these hearings. The precedent is set by the hearing held last time a Condor MOA was proposed. The first hearing should be shortly after the EIS filed with the FAA and not just prior to this record of decision that they expect to get. I ask the help of our elected officials to initiate the field hearings. Think of the Wall Street banks and the Securities and Exchange Commission. The FAA plays a similar role in assuring airspace safety. There has to be accountability. Government has to work for the people. There has to be accountability in the decision making. It's too late when the damage is done. Thank you.